Hello, all you people. Right there. Sitting right there in your chair. Yes, I know. You're a wingless butterfly. You want to fly throughout the air without a care, but you can't. You're tied down to that 12 to 17 job that you, you, you have been doing since you were 17. And you want to buy that, um, glorious, uh, yacht in, in the Boston Bay, but you can't. You can't eat that lobster. You're not rich. You're working at an auto shop. And you're covered in grease all day. But that's everyone. Teenagers. They're also covered in grease because they're working at McDonald's. They can't get money. You can't get money. No one can get money. It's the the one percent is controlling all of us. My now to you, Cody. My name's Cody, and I've never <laughs> f- built more attack than my life. And I'm in America. <laughs> and my name's Laz. I am. Sorry. I'm a wingless butterfly, and I'm in China. <laughs> And we're not across the pod, but across the, the other, other pond. pond. The show where we most likely delve into emotional existential crises probably once a month. Welcome to the I don't show, know where everybody. that came. I don't know where that came from. I really <laughs> don't know. I, I like. I was originally just going to do a, reg- a regular thing, but then all of a sudden, my brain was like, "No, you're not." <laughs> I like it. Uh, that was. Um, it was enthralling, honestly. And today's show will be on minimalism, mm-hmm. which is also yeah, enthralling. Which, sometimes. which is the which the is opposite the of that, opposite honestly. of what yeah, I did. You went way overboard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it, it's a nice um, change of pace. It's a nice I'm interested pace, how that's so going to sound with the intro music behind it. <laughs> or are you I'm gonna not going to put silence? the intro music on. Silence there. It's just going to be silence. I yeah, like it. because uh, you know, like we need to remember, we need to listen to the music in our souls, uh-huh. and sometimes it's playing something like uh, uh, Mozart's Requiem. So. You know, and maybe I'll just put it's Mozart. Like John Cage's four Actually, minutes I... and thirty three seconds. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if I want to put that in the background for, 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 for this intro, or if I, I think I want to put, um, like Lacrimosa. <laughs> you know, have you heard of that one? <laughs> I have it, heard part, that the part word. Of, uh, Lacrimosa is like part of Mozart's Requiem, and it's like it, it starts off with like a whole bunch of strings going bom ba da 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 bom ba da, and then the choir comes in. Oh yeah, okay, yep, I know what it is. Uh, yeah, I can. So I'll put good. that in the background. That'd be a good idea. Oh, in. Oh, by the way, like I have, I have a a solution to the 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 job crisis in the world now. Oh, okay, you know, that's gonna be good. Uh, let's keep, let's go with so, that. That'll be the first thing that we do. Yeah, today. well, solve I, the job I'm just, crisis. I'm just, yeah, I've been thinking about it. I <laughs> thought really long and hard. Okay, so we need, you know, it's AI is taking over our jobs, so we need to think about more jobs that. That are easy are easy enough to do, but robots can't do. Them. Right. Yep. You know. So, okay. First of all, just combining two things. What do guys have to do pretty much once or twice a week, or some people do it every day? Shave, right? Oh, okay. Shave. I, I went a whole shave. different direction with that. <laughs> Oh, okay. I know what you were thinking. No, no, not that. <laughs> not that. No. <laughs> Children, listen to our show, okay? 
<laughs> no, okay. okay. All right, shaving. No, no, You're no, right. No, no, yeah. no. Shaving, manscaping, you know, every day. Or it's for some people. And then, then we have to combine that with, like, obligatory work with something that everyone enjoys. Kiwis, right? Kiwis. So, okay. you know, the thing is... It's really annoying to have a fuzzy kiwi. So what we need to do <laughs> is we kiwi. need to give we need to give all the the coal miners that has lost their jobs they're going to be shaving kiwis now. And we're going to have hairless kiwis hanging out in all the supermarkets. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I just had a I had my first hair, hairless kiwi today. It was amazing. Re oh wait, you had like, a, I, you had I, a real hairless kiwi? I've never I've never seen a hairless kiwi. Yeah, dude. But it in the the kiwis uh, they were like on sale on on this uh, grocery app, and yeah, they send groceries to your house. Uh -huh. Yeah, we can get Aldi and to then, deliver over here. It's super sweet. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, that's awesome. But I don't like all these. <laughs> hey man, but, delivery, delivery. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But you know, like, um, like these kiwis were yellow, and then in the middle it's red. It, Very it, it's interesting. pretty cool, and they're hair. They were hairless, you know. And I, I felt like really, I don't know. I guess honored, maybe. I felt like I was like a guest of honor to get a hairless kiwi because it makes me think. And it's like these people. These people thought, you know, what would make this a kiwi more enjoyable for our customer? They shaved the kiwi. I don't, I didn't know. They probably didn't shave the kiwi. I just thought of that <laughs> when I got <laughs> it. It's probably just like a hairless kiwi. But I mean, like you have, I, but you could make really, any kiwi a hairless, hairless kiwi if you had people shaving kiwis. Exactly. You're on the right track, and then I think. we would, and we would give them jobs too. That's the that's the important part. We need to give people more jobs, and you know, shaving kiwis I think is going to be the way we. It's going to be the final solution. I'm just going to say that it's going to be the final <laughs> solution. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hairless kiwis are the minimalist okay. version of kiwis because they don't grow all the hair. I'm going to bring us into the topic. It's, oh, it's Last, a Brazilian kiwi. What What is minimalism? Describe so it for our minimalism. viewers. So, um, minimalism. So, what... Well, pretty much, it's just bringing... We're, well, we're talking about the lifestyle today. The minimalist lifestyle. Which okay, is right. pretty much just... Did you not think it was the minimalist I, lifestyle? I thought we were talking minimalist art and shit. <laughs> Well, I mean, we can talk about it in general, because they kind of all overlap. Yeah, they all you know? overlap. That's why it's and called minimalism. It's kind of a whole spectrum of ideas that focus on one yeah. thing. But please continue. I mean, like, what I was thinking originally is talking about the lifestyle, in which pretty much is taking everything out of your life that is, you know, um, extraneous. Extra. Yeah. You know, like, um, I think a lot of this movement really has been uh, pronounced more in recent years because of books like um, um, Marie, Marie Kondo? Kondo's book. Yeah. Uh, with uh, Spark Joy. What is it? Spark this Joy Love spark or something joy. like yep. that. Pick up something if it doesn't yeah, spark yeah, joy, yeah. throw it out. If it does, you keep it. Mm -hmm. I read that book. It's really good. It, it, it really made me think more about things, but it didn't I, I'm still really messy. <laughs> I have a hard so, time throwing things away. I'm like... I would say that I'm on the lowest level of being a hoarder. Really? Which I don't keep I don't keep random garbage, but whenever I see something, I'm like, that might have a use sometime in one niche circumstance. I should probably hold on to it. That's the kind of hoarder I am. <laughs> well, I yeah, see, that that's... I remember, like, um... Uh, Fang Fang, one day she got a she like her boss was moving or something and then her boss gave her like asked her do you want these things and she's like yeah and then like she brought home like things like a laptop case like one of those hard hard shell laptop <laughs> cases and then like like 
uh, uh, what is it? A weird, like, some weird, like, steaming contraption for clothes that I didn't know how to use. It looked like one of those things that, it almost looked like one of those things that were specially designed for, like, a Nintendo game system. Like, where it's That's like, super it's like, the, it, it, I, I don't know, like, it, it kind of looked like I should plug it into my Nintendo and I can play, like, like, chores, you know, the <laughs> game. <laughs> the fucking chores game shark. You need it so you can speedrun your chores. <laughs> fucking speed up that yeah, vacuum. Exactly. Perfect, uh, perfect mm. path for the vacuum. That's what it does for you. <laughs> <laughs> the most exactly. optimized. It's like, you <laughs> You can vacuum the ceilings now with the game, the Couture's game shark. The vacuum shark. You can vac vacuum your cat. Vacuum, vacuum the yard. Vacuum you don't your need silverware. silverware anymore. You don't need a dishwasher anymore. <laughs> yeah. Suck it, off that it, fucking. It, it works. It works. Th it works at the microscopic level. It will vacuum up all of those nasty germs Use right to brush off your, teeth. your spoons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just like you see like a cut of like a guy just like putting like the nozzle into his mouth. It's just like, <laughs> and <he's> like <laughs> <laughs> it'll take your dick off. It'll suck your dick off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was that was whitest kids. You yeah, know, yeah. kids, you know. Uh, don't don't do that. They'll suck your dick off. What? <laughs> oh man, I, I I felt I felt so I felt so bad for everyone that that didn't like i remember the last time i went back to america we showed some whitest kids you know and no one like laughed it was like only us two is like oh man that's classic and then everyone's like okay yeah <laughs> that's 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 seriously one of the worst feelings in the world you know is showing someone a video and being them just sitting there being like like hey so what do you want to eat it's like hey man like watch this video it's like no uh, oh, oh yeah 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 <laughs> you know <laughs> it well the thing is like it's it's a double-edged sword because you want you want them to enjoy it but then they watch you watching them try to enjoy it and they <laughs> it feels weird because i've been shown stuff guess... and i'm like i like i'll see them looking at me like when it's supposed to be funny i'm like well now you fucked it up because <laughs> now well, you're looking I, at me I, like, I guess <laughs> Yeah, it's it's almost like you. It, they're it's almost like they're begging for you to perform how yeah. they want, and then yep. like, and then something in the deepest part of your brain's just like, fuck you. Yeah, it's like that feels <laughs> weird. Know? But then it's like sometimes you'll laugh at something they they didn't find funny the first time, and then they just give you this really confused look. Like, why is that funny? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I remember, like, um. You know, there's some videos that the first time I watch them, I, I crack the hell up, and then, like, I'll watch it, like, the fourth time, and I'm like, or years later, I'm just like, why did I laugh at that? The human yeah. mind is very strange. Yeah, exactly. And this is also why we need to organize your life. Yeah, if you organize you know? your brain, you organize your humor. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In in oh, that's a that's a nice double entendre uh, right there, uh, right? I will rank my jokes. Um, <laughs> this one does not spark joy. I'm throwing this joke out. I don't like it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will do now. We can we can do spark joy with it with uh with abstract concepts. You know, it's like. <laughs> hmm. I'm finding, I'm finding, I'm finding some fascism in my mind. I think I'm, that doesn't spark joy. I'm going to throw that out. You know. Have you, have you, know, you just done like, like that, um, this sparks joy like idea? Did yeah. you like practice that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have uh, tried it before. Like, I, um, how did it feel like? Oh, it wait, went? we should, what, what? Well, we should first uh, explain more what minimalism, because I, I sure, talked about that. Sure, we did kind of jump did. into Marie Kondo. That's, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we'll go back to that. But, like, minimalism pretty much is... J well, actually, we did say that, didn't we? We said that was, like, pretty much taking all off, out the extra yeah. extraneous things. Just cutting the fat out, right? Yeah. But we, but you need you need, do need fat in your diet, so I'm not going to make that. Cut the sugar out. for Oh yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. Pretty much like that. But um, yeah, actually, I did do the spark joy thing, and um, I, I'm not. I mean, yeah, it did. It did 
like especially with my clothes i think that is something I, that i, I feel, had a lot i feel of... like it's perfect to do for because clothes can pile up in your closet and stuff and then mm. you get like weirdly attached to them so i think that's a good way to do it so it really helped with your clothes yeah yeah i mean like because like there's just sometimes you get clothes like at first you like them but then slowly slowly they just kind of sit in the closet and then you keep thinking to yourself i should wear that but then it's like nah i don't want to wear that and then those clothes were piling up and then one day i I read that book and i was just like okay i'm gonna get rid of clothes and then that's um why <laughs> like i remember like i i put all my clothes in the back of the trunk of my car and then i went oh, yeah, to yeah. school and i went i just went around like a dealer i was just like hey man do you want some clothes yep <laughs> i still have some of your uh button-up shirts that were originally <laughs> peter's shirts they were originally peter's well, grandpa shirts <laughs> yeah Did, i told you about that story yeah. right yep I love like, it. I like still, the, I still the, have them. the one time, like I, I feel like that's one of the reasons that sometimes I'm not very, I'm very successful socially. Like at least back then, <laughs> it's just like, like I remember I was I was in my piano class, and then one of the kids that, like, um, were were like kind of like on the fringe of being my friend just came up to me and I guess they just they were feeling good that day or something and just like yeah I'm just gonna be social with everyone and then you know, we sat down and he's just like hey Laz nice shirt and I was just like thanks it's my it's 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 my friend's dead grandpa's <laughs> <laughs> and then he was just like he just like his eyes kind of just got wider for a second there, and then he turned away and started playing piano. I'm like, wait, what? Did, what did I say? What I said? That, was, that wasn't weird. Um, I think I was wearing one at one of Peter's parties. I don't uh, know if it was recently. And then he recognized ago, so, it, and he recognized. He's like, "That's a good shirt." Where'd you? I was like, "I feel like I've seen it before." I'm like, "Yeah, it was your grandpa's shirt." <laughs> 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 oh um, man, it's a small world too. Because uh, one of my coworkers was actually um, married by uh, Peter's grandpa, Dale. Yeah, Dale Clemens. I was like, wow, that's really small world shit right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, we we uh, remember we shouldn't uh, say last names. Oh, that's yeah. true. Not yeah, Dale I'll something bleep it up from now on. <laughs> yeah, I'll bleep it up from now on. Um, but uh, what is it? Um, yeah, like uh, taking out all those clothes out of my life really kind of made everything a lot clearer. It, it does make things clearer. You just like throw out some a lot of the stuff you don't need, and then you. You don't have that extra thought in your mind all the time. It's like you pass by some stuff sometimes and you look at it and then you're like, I should do something about that. And then it just piles up in the back of your brain. You know, I it I think it it, it is important to do stuff like that. And also the, the, the other thing is um, not just with that, but like with fixing things, too. You know, like seeing like a light that needs a... Uh, 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 a uh, uh, bulb changed or something you know like it's like these little things that just kind of pile up like psychologically uh-huh. like psychological trash almost you know and like it, i also listened to jordan peterson recently like you know um i have a problem with sleep and like i you know i don't know if you've ever t- taken the, the the what is it the five big person the five main personalities kind of like personality quiz like oh the, um, like one um, of, the one the one that has the letters like the four letters no no it's a different one like oh, it okay. kind of rates you on five different five uh ranges of personality and one of them is two of them is like openness like openness to new things and um neuroticism and i'm like really high on both of those so that like, sounds right <laughs> <laughs> yeah like so like uh it's it's really hard to 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 organize myself then because like 
It seems like as soon as I get an organized routine, my brain just like wants to. It is. It almost. It, fe- it literally feels like someone's like pushing me. Like it feels like a giant heavy man pushing me away from like an organized life. It. It's like that when I when I need to like for instance last night. I I needed to go to sleep. You know, I I've been trying to go to sleep at a certain time every day. Uh-huh. But then my mind was like, no, I really really want to watch Dragon Slayer, or no, not Dragon Demon Slayer. Oh, yeah, and it's like I want to watch it before I go to bed. I'm like, no brain. <laughs> In the past, you watch things before bed and then you got excited. Yep, and, and then, then like, you can't no, go to no, sleep. No, 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 I want to. <laughs> well, I didn't I didn't watch Demon Slayer, but I decided to play with the cat instead, and then the cat uh like i was he was like in the corner like around this other corner and how would i say it? he was far away from the corner i was at and i was kind of like peeking over the corner and then if you do that to cats they get like they they go into like um stealth mode like stealth mode yeah and they want to like like um like pounce on you yeah and so i didn't think he was so far away i didn't think he would he would get like <laughs> run over so quickly Engage, yeah. and i just yeah yeah he engaged really quickly like i pulled back and then all of a sudden he was just there and then it was it scared <laughs> the hell out of me and like i my 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 arm must like my tricep i don't know what happened it like it like leaped by itself in some weird way it was like it jumped out like away from my bone for a second and came back and snapped back in place and then it was like it really crept up really weirdly and then from there i was just like super awake and i was like oh shit (laughs) (laughs) i fucked it up i tried to avoid the thing that was going to keep me awake but now i'm more awake (laughs) but see like it's like my mind is like just pulling me away from just a regular like organized life routine you know and like Uh Like, I need organization in my life. And so I've been trying to, no matter what the occasion is, just go to sleep at 10. 9 o'clock, start getting ready for bed and calming down. And then 10 o'clock, going to bed, you know. Uh But that is hard. That is super, super hard for me. Like, getting up, like, going to sleep and getting up every day at the same time. I have a hard um, time getting up at the same time every day. I like my yeah. mind does not get up. It's just like, nope, time to lay in bed. Do that some more. Lay in bed. That sounds uh-huh. good. Just do that. I'm like, but See, I gotta go what? to work, brain. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, just stay in bed. Mm-hmm. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I like. I really fight that a lot. Like this morning, I had to fight it because like I couldn't get to sleep until two last night, uh-huh. and I got up at six this morning. And my brain was just like, no, sleep. And I was like, no, brain, you're my enemy right now. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is impressive, though, because that is, that's organizing your life. And I'm proud of you. That's good. Yeah, thanks, man. I, it's hard. It's really hard. I need this organization because it's, it, I, I feel like one of the reasons I'm getting, like, stomach disease, this stomach disease is because, like, I... I have been having sleeping problems like for my ever since like high school and anxiety uh. problems. I I mean like you look at my mom, my brother and me, we're all kind of anxiety stricken and well my brother doesn't really have sleep problems, but he's also, you know, a lot of anxiety especially with um his uh doing all his uh, college stuff. You know? I'm sure he's I'm the same a very way, focused so. individual though. Yeah. So, I mean, but see, that's that's kind of the reason why um, minimalism. I think one of the reasons minimalism came into so many people's lives is because of the complication of our society now. You know, uh, media. You know, like information fog and all that. Yeah, I mean, we have access to all kinds of information. So having your own information home that constantly bombards you and then you go outside and you're constantly bombarded by information while also having that so I, yeah if your ha- if your household is minimalistic when you go out into the into the world your brain has more space to like 
yeah manage everything else that is that is good having your household in order is super important yeah and i think uh, it in um the analex uh by uh confucius well it's not written by him it's written by his d- disciplines mm-hmm. but you know in that analex like uh confucius says like um before you you go to uh rule a country you should uh organize your own home you know uh uh-huh. yeah everything and i think i've heard yourself. that yeah i think i've heard that not just in in chinese philosophy but in western that's definitely philosophy been in a lot of different ones i mean i think i've heard it said like before you can control your outer life you have to control your home life or something like that maybe yeah. i just made that one up <laughs> <laughs> i don't know but like you know it's it really is true because like um i mean like that's also part of the the idea of individualism you know is to work at the the level of the individual first in order to make society as a whole better uh-huh you know because if you have all these inv- individuals that are struggling to survive then how do you make a a vital uh society you know so like um it's 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 important to work on yourself and as, especially if you want to help others i think and i made i realized this probably in high school you know but um you know minimalism is just something that lets you be more focused on what you love in life and what you should be doing in life you know cuz like if you're always this is also one of my big problems is like i always when i get anxious i tend to add more tasks uh-huh. because i find it exciting and novel you know like maybe i'll be I'll have like my the like I'll have like a big paper to do and then I get freaked out because the da- due date's coming up. So I decide like maybe a week or two before it's it's due. I, it's like I'm going to learn Polish. <laughs> and then I start to learn Polish. And then and then I it, I decide to just keep working on Polish instead of doing my my essay that I need to write. And then and then it gets like 3 days before the due date and I'm like why did I start learning polish <laughs> and then <laughs> this I can't do, help me with my I, paper <laughs> yeah and then I I take the textbook I I bought and then throw it across the room and I'm like no why did you do this to me <laughs> polish <laughs> you know and like see oh I just realized polish and polish are spelled the yes, same yes they are spelled but exactly anyway, the same like, a polish polishing <laughs> Um, yeah, brigade. I think uh, I think I've heard uh, that as a euthanism for a blowjob, a Polish polish. <laughs> I've heard, or or a hand job, probably a hand job. But anyway, like, um, what is it? it? You know, just like I think a lo- I think actually a lot of people do that. Like they'll they'll take on. It's like a a mechanism to to falsely uh, handle your anxiety Uh because like some people just like take things up like that just because they want to not think about the thing they need to do it's a it's a way to procrastinate um yeah procrastination adding on extraneous tasks um Uh i think i bounce this over to this is kind of the same idea where when you like i have this problem i'll branch into like a hundred different hobbies uh-huh. And, and quickly be like, oh, well, I don't have time to practice this anymore. I don't have time to practice that. And I feel like... I'm... And mm-hmm. minimalizing the amount of hobbies that you want to do kind of really helps deepen in... Like, I find it more mm-hmm. engaging to go deeper into one hobby than to have a mm-hmm. hundred different hobbies. Yeah, exactly. Like, So usually I'll like... Yeah. When I feel like I'm cutting into something else, I'll be like, okay, I'm not going to do this this week. Like, because... Mm-hmm. I don't have time to do it, and I don't feel like it gives me as much mm. engagement as the other ho- as these other hobbies. Like two weeks ago, I was doing a ton of miniature painting. I haven't done as much miniature painting this week because it ate up a ton of my time. <laughs> and then you probably threw a lot of money into it, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> I didn't throw too I mean, much money. Like 
in the in the grand scheme. But yeah, like the more hobbies you get into, the more you have to put money into each different hobby. So by just deepening into one hobby, I find that I spend less money mm -hmm. overall. Yeah, and then you you get more out of it too. Yeah. Like that that's that's the thing. Like I've been it. You know, I, this is something that I think of a lot. Is like with our upbringing as millennials. I think a lot of times it was like. We grew up in the, it's like, you can achieve your dreams, yep. kind of. You can do um, anything. Uh, yeah, and see, the thing is, you can do anything, but you can't do everything, you know? Yeah. And see, that that's what I've been slowly learning, especially coming over to China. Like, I was ta talking to my, my um, friend the other day. It's like, coming to China, it was like getting punched in the face like by Mike Tyson because like <laughs> it's just like it, it's like really all of a sudden you realize you're in the real world and people want real world skills not your 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 fantasies of being everything you know uh -huh. of being like, like a composer a writer um what uh, like being a master of all the instruments you know speaking every language uh you know it's like you you get to a point it's like i'm one person i only have this one life and i need to make money i need to live you know uh -huh. and you know it's like you can't if you're always being stretched out like that you can never focus and you know come up with a skill that people actually need yep. and even and and not even that just like if you keep stretching yourself out like that you never learn anything it's like like i i remember there was that there was a lo long stint where you know i was always learning chinese but i was always saying like to myself oh yeah i'm going to to learn german and then i would learn german for a month and i would quit and then I learned, I was like, I'm going to learn Spanish, you know, learn Spanish for maybe three months and then I quit. And then uh, French was the same, you know, French, Japanese, all these languages and I never learned them, you know. Uh -huh. But then all of a sudden I was uh, the, like last year, I was like, OK, I'm fed up with not learning these languages. I'm going to just do Cantonese for one year. And then lo and behold, now I can speak Cantonese. Because I actually put the time and the effort, and I focused just on that. And, and you now threw away all those Swedish, other ones for that year. You're like, I'm not, I'm going to focus on just one. Yeah, you know. Like, uh, I actually did throw out my Minanhua, like the, the Southern Min uh, dialect, Chinese dialect book. Yeah. And my notes for it. I was just like, no one wants to speak this with me. And, like, no, there's... It's slowly dying out. Not even people in, that were born in the same <laughs> village and then, like, 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 meet each other later on in life, like, will speak the language with each other. They still speak Mandarin with each other because they feel like it's weird. I remember in, like, I was in the train coming back from um, Guangdong a few months ago, and there was two guys behind me that were speaking. They were speaking in Mandarin at first because they didn't know where each other were from. And then one guy asked, he's like, oh, where are you from? And then he's like, oh, yeah, I'm from this one village. And they're like, oh, I'm from the village right over. And he switched into Southern Mean. And the, but the other guy didn't. He just kept speaking a Mandarin. <laughs> it's like, nah, and it I'm was not really that, man. <laughs> yeah. He, and I could t tell in his voice, he was like, felt really awkward about speaking in Southern Mean. And he was like, you know how when people don't want to do something, they kind of like, uh, yeah, uh huh. Like yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, they kind of like just glaze out. Like, he started doing that. <laughs> and then they slowly went back into Mandarin. It's... Huh. But see, like, that's the thing. If you... If if that was two people from Guangdong, like, speaking Cantonese, they would just speak can Cantonese. They they don't really... They, they don't like speaking Mandarin as much, you know? Yeah, cause... And actually, you know... It, it's funny because, like, when I go to Guangdong, a lot of times, if they know that I, j I speak Cantonese, they're like... I don't want to speak Mandarin. I'm going to speak to you in Cantonese. I remember one time we we were coming down from this mountain and we went to a village. And I know this is off topic, but I think it's kind of interesting. It's like we were buying some uh, some like village goods there, which is 
awesome. Like they have a lot of interesting stuff to sell. And we bought some of this stuff. We talked to him for a while and whatnot. And the guy, like when he offered to t- take us to the bus stop on his motorcycle, and w- when we got to down to the main road, he sl- he uh, was starting to tell us directions in uh, like how to get to the bus stop. And then like he. And he's like, no, I'll just tell you in Cantonese. And then he starts speaking <laughs> Cantonese. And I was like, I was like, oh, my Cantonese isn't that good yet. And then like, I was like, not understanding what he was saying. And I was like, uh, 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 uh. And there's so many people that were like that, you know. That's interesting. That's, but see, like. That's cool that they want to speak their language, y- though. Yeah, yeah. I love, that's what I love Guangdong people for because they're they're very proud of their language but pretty much everywhere else in china it's like why are you speaking this well shanghanese people are also like that they like shanghanese and i think people in sichuan also kind of like sichuan hua but other places they seem very reluctant to speak to even their own people in their own language and it kind of makes me a little sour about that it's like then why should I learn your language? Uh-huh. You know, and you don't. You even you think it's 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 worthless to learn this language. So why should I learn it? So that's why I remember the day I I finally decided. It's like okay, I'm gonna burn these notes. I tried to burn it, and it was it, it wasn't burning properly. <laughs> it was just kind of like burn the corner of the the notebook, and I'm like okay. Well, I guess I can put it in water and make it into a weird slushy, like, snowball thing. That's what I did. <laughs> so, I, like, I, it was, like, completely, like, irrevile, re- revivable. Irrevocable. So, I was just yeah. like, yeah, well, I'm, I like my word better. Irrevivable. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, uh, yeah, like, I, I just made it to, a, like, a weird slushy, like, paper mache ball, and then I threw it in the trash. And then I took my textbooks for that, and I I threw it away, too. And recently, I tried to, to like, I always, I live here in Xiamen, so I feel, I always feel like I should learn it. But then I, I get in a cab with someone that's from, you know, one of the cities that speaks Southern mean, and then I ask them, hey, can you teach me some? And then I'll try to speak some, uh, like, a few sentences in it, you know? And they always, they always, they never answer me back in Really? Do they just keep going in Mandarin? Yeah, even when their accent is super, super thick in in Mandarin. Like, some of the people with Southern mean, especially from Chenzhou, a city north from us, when they speak uh, Mandarin, like... It's so hard to understand because their they their pronunciation is really 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 weird. But anyway, like I try to speak to them in in Southern Mean and they never answer me back. But with in Guangdong, if I start even say one like leho, just like hi in Cantonese, like they just start speaking to me and they sometimes they don't even blink an eye. They're just like, oh, you speak it, okay, huh. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, yep, yeah, this is it, how it, it is now. Yeah, dude, it's it's super interesting. But anyway, like this is and this is coming back to minimalism is I saw Minanhua, like Southern Min, as a a hindrance in my life. It was always sitting on my bookshelf and it was just uh-huh. like, you need to do this still. You still need to learn this language. And I was just like, well, from my experiences, I don't. So I just threw it out, you know. And like, I'm I want to focus on languages that are more important, you know, like Cantonese and uh, also, you know, Spanish languages from outside of China. Which I think right now, learning Mandarin, Cantonese, and Fang Fang's language is good enough. I think so. Know? Yeah, I think that's yeah, that's a good amount of languages to learn. That's, that's already yeah, more so, than most of Americans speak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I'm, I mean, like, see, that's that's one thing, you know, because, like, I think minimalism is not just an organization of physical things, but you need to first look, just like Marie Kondo says, you know, you need to look at the things in your life abstractly that spark joy, you know? Like that, like, you know, when... 
when I was in high school, I wanted to be so many things, and I wanted to learn so many instruments and so many languages that I put. I I was I was kind of running in place、uh-huh. the whole time. So like then I started thinking, what like I started to focus on just one thing. It's like okay, I'm gonna focus on composition. I'm gonna focus on this language right now. I'm focusing on learning Chinese. Okay, that's when you can start getting results. You know, instead of like always, you know, what what is the word? Something thin, like stretching your out self out too thinly. Uh huh. Or there's a better way to say that, but you know what I'm saying. Like, so we all always need to say see what is the most important thing in our life and see. How that translates to the physical, ma- material items that surround our life, and、um, a lot of times that results in throwing out like twelve giant garbage bags of stuff from your house. <laughs> yep,、um, and、I、always throw that garbage out because、uh, uh, if you just leave the garbage out in your house, sometimes it just continues、mm-hmm. to pile up and it doesn't help. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's important to you know. like follow through because I've also seen that when you like try to throw away stuff, and if you don't follow through, if you stop the halfway point, like if you if you hadn't have irrevocably、mm-hmm. destroyed your notes, you could have jumped right back into、mm-hmm. it like a month later, and what would have been the point of yeah, cutting、exactly. it out of your life without following through? So that's an important thing to do is to follow through on.、Mm-hmm. Uh, Yeah. Things that you want to do, like I think something I did in my life was I had a lot of games sitting on my Steam library and stuff that I'd never played or finished、mm-hmm. that were sitting just installed, taking up space on there. And I was like, you know what? I'm probably never gonna play these games, so I just uninstalled all yeah, the ones that like, I wasn't gonna play. Yeah, exactly. You bought too many games, and now you got to play them all. <laughs> you know,、right? I, I thought about starting a thing like that, and then I would look <laughs> like I'd be like, I could record myself playing games, and then I'd look at it and be like, but I don't want to play that game. Like, <laughs> I don't know why I bought it. <laughs> I I thought about just starting a let's play channel with you, but I think it would be hard <laughs> the, because we're in two places. Yeah, being in two places at once would be difficult. It'd be like I would have to stream it, and <laughs> and then I would be playing, and like twenty seconds later, you would be like, "Hey, do you remember that thing you just saw twenty seconds ago?" And be like, I "Already past that. I don't know." <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it, maybe in the future, lag will after quantum. Physics gets solved after after we <laughs> after we shrink the Earth so it's smaller.、Uh, yeah, we could probably do that then. <laughs> like like it, after we we take the flat Earth that we have now and fold it into a sphere, maybe like like the the distances between places in the world will you know be smaller. Do you ever think we'll dig tunnels through the Earth? We can't. The Earth's flat. If you dig through it, you're just going <laughs> to fall into, into, into. Yeah, you're just going to. You're just going to dig into the void and just fall, like just like in Minecraft, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Never dig straight down. Yeah, exactly. That's、uh, that's at least that's what I've heard. I don't. I don't play Minecraft as much anymore. But anyway, like going、bit. back to your thing. Well, there was a little bit in like high school, and I remember like going over to Peter's house, especially, and just like playing till like three o'clock in the morning, and then him just passing out on his keyboard. <laughs> like he can just he can just sleep anywhere, but、really、I can't do that. But anyway, like going back to your thing, like、um, like do you have other things in your life like that? Do you do you feel like you've you've kind of Maybe you don't have the same focus problems that I do.、Uh, I think I think they're not as、um, pronounced pronounced as yours are. Because when I sit down to do something, I can focus down and do it.、Um, and I don't have、mm. that many things in my life that I feel that I need that focus for anymore.、Um, mm-hmm. Now that I, I mean, how about guitar? I school or anything? I haven't played guitar in a while. I well, I need to get my. I really. I'm procrastinating. I need to take them into the shop and get them like refretted because <laughs> they、mm. are 
a little bit old and overplayed at the moment, and I need to get him. I need to get him back into playing condition. They're kind of just sitting around. Mm. But it's yeah. it's something like there are songs that I want to learn how, that I want to learn how to play, of course. But mm -hmm. I don't I don't get the same joy that I used to right now. At the moment, my uh -huh. mind is more in the like writing for D and D stuff mode, and that that's something I've mm -hmm. learned about myself is that I can't force myself to get into a mood. Like, I'm never gonna go play guitar in an amazing rock band and be famous and stuff. I don't, I don't have that drive to do that. So guitar is really just no me noodling around with a song that I want to uh -huh. know, and I can usually get my uh -huh. my way into doing that, which is fun. I love doing it, uh -huh. um, but it's not something that uh -huh. I feel that I need to do constantly anymore. It's like, you know, I have the drive to play guitar mm -hmm. today. It's that, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I just haven't felt it recently. Well, I mean, like that's uh, that's kind of like hobbies you know like uh we don't well i mean that's some hobbies like there's some hobbies that were like i want to get good at this but then there's some hobbies where you're like yeah i just do it for fun yeah you know? like but i at the same time i also think that you know for instance like you say like sometimes you just don't feel like doing you know picking up and having the drive for that i think a lot of times people make the drive not just have it. That's you know? true. Um, I can definitely agree like with I that. notice, I notice a lot of times. You know, a lot. I'll I'll sit down because I think that's something that's been romanticized a lot in 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 pretty much all cultures around the world. Is that it's like the artist, the mode of the artist is like you get you're just like walking around like in the in, in the mall and you're just uh, you know having your your Starbucks Frappuccino and then all of a sudden you're just like oh shit I got an idea and you spill a pumpkin latte all over the place <laughs> onto the, the girl in front of you and you just run back to your house and you just start painting or writing music or whatnot uh -huh. but no it's like really I mean you should there's this book called the the war of art and I I've listened to it twice already and really what it says is like if you want to get good, it's not about inspiration. It's about sitting down and paying your dues every day to get good at your craft. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and I've noticed with that with composition, you know, it's like every, uh, recently every day I sit down and I just start writing. I don't think about what I'm writing. I just like I think about something that I should do and I just start doing it. Like I look at a piece and I'm like, OK, this part I should start with the base you know and start doing something there and i just start doing it and if i don't like what i do i scrap and i do something else and i just keep going i just keep going i don't really care and see at first it's like almost like a rusty gear it's like it's not working properly it's going really slow but then after about five minutes it's like i feel like i'm in that zone you know and see that's what happens with everything even when you're doing having to do like something like like you got to read a paper or something. You, the first few paragraphs, the few first page or so, you're like, ah, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to uh -huh. do this. And then you get to the next page, and then you're like, okay, this is interesting, and I'm I feel focused. I'm going to keep reading. You know, like it's like you hit that 10 minute mark, and then all of a sudden you can just keep doing it. And see that that's kind of the thing I I think with the uh, with hobbies and and just getting good at skills in general or doing anything, you just got. I don't think it has anything to do with, um, with, you know, motivation really. Well, I don't know. It's hard to say more inspiration. I think inspiration finds you once you, you, you start doing the work and then you start getting the pleasure out of it after you put in your time, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's a little column, a little column B. Like if you want to get good at something, mm -hmm. you definitely have to do that. You have to do it every day or every other day. You have to uh -huh. put time in every Every so often to do it. You can't just be like, oh, I'll mm -hmm. pick this up once a month. You're never going to be good at it. You're uh -huh. going to always just be uh -huh. just okay. But if you're picking mm -hmm. it up and every time you're like, I don't really want to do this. If you're doing that every time, maybe mm -hmm. you don't actually want to be good at it. You're just, you're doing it for mm -hmm. a different reason rather than enjoying it. Mm -hmm. I, I well, feel I, like there always has to be at least a couple of times where you're like, I really want to do this right now. To, for it to be like mm -hmm. something you want to pursue. 
Well, I mean, see that the, the other problem is that the novelty wears off, you know, like, um, you know, like you'll pick up something like with me, like different languages, you know, I, I'll pick up Swedish and then like, I learn it for three months and then I, I'm like, oh shit, I don't want to do this anymore. And then it, maybe I'll have like an entire work, a week or two weeks where I'm just like, I don't want to learn this anymore. But then I get over that hump and all of a sudden, a sudden like, man, Swedish is awesome. And then I get, <laughs> it's just like ups and downs like that. I think, I think really like, <laughs> I don't know. It, there True, is you, also. You I still think you're eventually right came sense. back to a point where you enjoyed it again. Like if you're just constantly over mm-hmm. and over, just like I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Mm-hmm. Maybe don't do it. Uh-huh. I, like there, there is a point where you can be like, maybe this isn't for me anymore. Yeah, I, I'm not sure where that point is though. You know, like um, it's it's hard to say. I think, you know. And see, like that's that's why I think it's it's hard to to say what things you should get rid of in your life, you know? Yeah. Because like, like it seems like all these things. I mean, first, it, these things all come out of abstractions originally, and I think it's more of the abstractions behind, you know, the ideas of the objects that are around you that matter more than the objects themselves because if you're say if you're say like a musician like me like you're going to value more musical items you know uh-huh. and and see you gotta first decide that you're a mu- that you're a musician first and then you start to decide which items around you have value and so that's that's kind of what I'm thinking here, and this is kind of why I, I've been talking about these more abstract ideas than you know the organizing organizing itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean, with you, it seems like you're you're really like D and D is like part of you, and like you know guitar. I mean, you've been playing guitar for how long? No. Since freshman year of high school. Yeah, see? I mean, well, freshman year of high school, that's not as long as I thought. No, nope, I've yeah. been, like, for instance, for me, with composition, I've been composing since I was 10. Yep, yeah. that is definitely a part of you. But then, see, the other thing, the same time, I, I started trombone. And I didn't get as much joy out of trombone. And I did it for so long, and then I finally quit um, after... Uh, uh, what is that? Benka, the first part of college. What is that called? Freshman year. My bachelor's. Oh, your bachelor's. bachelor's. There you go. Yeah, after my bachelor's, I I just decided, yeah, I don't really want to continue with trombone. But I, I I always think about it, like going, getting, buying a cheap trombone over here and playing some, because like, I I feel I still feel like, you know, the. Like, I like to improv, you know? And just like the other day, I came up with a really tasty chord progression in um, my on my computer. And I was just like using my melodica to just do like a lot of really cool lines and whatnot. Like, kind of like we, we would do like back over there too, right? Uh-huh. In America. And I like doing that. And I like the, the feeling of like, like kind of the the connection between an an instrument and like your breathing you know it's like it that has does a feel much... good i haven't had that since i played the trumpet and that did feel nice yeah it's like this weird biological connection that you get it's almost like a symbiotic feeling uh-huh. like you you get with your 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 horn you know the horn can give you that but like a like a guitar or a piano, it doesn't give you the same kind of like, it doesn't feel like it's like a living being almost, you know, but with a, with a a horn, you get that. And that, that's the thing. It's like, I, I was, I, I played, I started playing trombone when I was just 10 years old and I felt like I never could get better. And it just made me quit, Hmm. you know, as much as I tried, 
Like, I, I couldn't get the, gr the right sound out of my instrument. And I had no idea why. And people kept telling me, embouchure, embouchure, embouchure. <laughs> like, That's you need the big to word. Make, embouchure. Yeah, you need to put your you need to put your lips in this position, and then you need to make farting sounds like this, and then you can yeah, and then you will be good at trombone. And I'm like, I've been trying this for so long, but you know, to be fair, I now looking back on it, I didn't, I didn't uh, practice as much as I should. You know, like, just like now how I practice language and composition and stuff every day, you know, it, it it's much different. But I do remember one thing that trombone, trombone actually taught me a lot about um, motivation and determination mm -hmm. and perseverance. Because, like, I still remember, like, there was this one solo, like, I remember in middle school. We, we had... Did you have solo ensemble contests back then? I don't think I did ever. Where you'd, like, practice for a solo, and then you'd go in a contest, and then you have judges, and they give you prizes and No, whatnot. we didn't ever, co ever have, have contests. We kind of just picked who was going to play the solo, and then they had to practice it. No, but, I mean, like, not in just, like, the the band, the, the ensemble pieces, like like with the whole band like it would be like you and a piano player and you would get up in front of a crowd and then play in front of judges and then they give you no i never did like, that scores well we had these every year and it came to to uh like uh, my first year in middle school like there was like uh this really really good trombone player that everyone knew that that was in the high school in our area and like um they kept saying, oh, he, he in middle school, he played Blue Bells of Scotland, which was like a, like in the trombone world, that's like one of the, the most famous solos Interesting. for trombone. Yeah. And like it starts, it's, it's based off of a Scottish um, hymn or I don't know what it, it would, it would be called just folk song probably, but it's like um, the main part of the song is. Oh, where, oh, where has my Highland laddie gone? Oh, where, oh, where has my Highland laddie gone? You know, and like, it's based off of that line. It's just theme and variations. Mm -hmm. And like, I still remember the beginning. It starts off with the piano. Bum, bum, ba, da, 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 da. Dum. And then the trombone comes in with this really incredible, like, series of octave leaps it's just like bum 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 you know and it's like i remember and there's some parts in it that are really fast like the last part i remember it's like there's this like bridge part and it and you have to do this series of weird arpeggios where it's like bum 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 and then you just rock it into the next variation where it's just like if you play it like the professional level it's like yeah yeah i couldn't i couldn't do that that fast like i I was at that time. I was like, like I would do do that, that that speed. But if you hear people like Joe, uh, uh, what is it? I forgot all of those. Kristen Lindbergh. Well, I actually never thought of it. Kristen Lindbergh is probably Swedish, isn't he? That sounds like a very Swedish name. That sounds Lindbergh. like a pretty Swedish name. But anyway, yeah, but. He he's like one of the most famous trombone players in the world, and like he plays that just rockets. It's like like fly the bubble bee, like. <laughs> you know, like all of that shit. And so I still remember, like I was determined. I was like, I'm going to be as good as that that one kid that played this in middle school. But, and he did in my his second year, I'll do my first year. And I remember every night practicing for three or four hours and sometimes for just two measures 
I would put that in, in my finale notepad and I would just press record and I would listen to it and then I would try to play it myself. It would just be like, and I would just be like, get all slurry. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would, it would just be like one of those, you know, 7 Eleven uh, big, big slushes, you know. <laughs> but like, um, just let me slurp but, up all those you know, notes. <laughs> yeah. Just like, Mm, mm, mm. Just, mm, ooh, it's it's mm, blue raspberry blue scotland you know but like see like i still remember like trombone taught me that is like sitting down and just focusing on two measures and just keep doing that and i still remember like the day that i actually performed in that contest um like i i i played it really well actually and then like the judge that was judging me that time he i remember finishing it and he just like his hand shaking and just well writing down like he didn't even there's like a rubric Uh and like each category had like something you you where a place where you can write you know and then like he just wrote he didn't even write in each rubric he just wrote all across like slanted like about it it's like this piece was a this was a masterpiece thanks for all the hard work you did and it's like I, I, you are a great trombone player and you have a bright future for you and that man that just made me feel like the best in the world like after doing all that work and getting that i framed that shit it's still in my room in america and it just makes me think it's like hard work can pay off you know and you can you just need to shoot for something and just do the and just do the work you need to do you know? i think there's that phrase hard work beats talent every time yeah dude that's that's the thing like like mozart you know people always say he's a genius that's why he's so good well do you know how much mozart practiced how much he was composing every day how much he was how forced he was to practice piano? every day <laughs> Yeah, that's the other thing. <laughs> it's like, why is he a genius? It's not just because he he came out of his mom and then all of a sudden it's like, Goo Goo Gaga, I can play, um, I can play you know, Bach with my pinkies tied yeah, behind he didn't, my Yeah, he didn't come out the womb composing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's well, <laughs> so like, that's the thing. And trying to tie it to minimalism, it's like, that's the thing. You got to. For me, I, I have to have a goal, and then I need to figure out how that goal translates into the objects in my life. Like, what do I really need to, to, to get this goal? And that can be all sorts of different goals. It can be like spiritual goals. It can be like survival goals. It can be goals in love and stuff. It's like, what do I really need for this? And I think that's the, the, the critical question here, you know? I think on that note. That's how I feel. I think on that note well, we well, can. Oh. But I wait. I want you to to have some closing words on it. What it, what is your idea? What is your definition of minimalism? My definition of minimal, minimalism is find what you like to do about your life, what you do, and cut out all those things that hinder you from enjoying your life. That's what that's what I think <laughs> minimalism really strives to do. Yeah, just like uh, yeah, I probably should uh, quit the pipe. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You know, sometimes I just get a little anxious. I just gotta go in the back alley and, and you know, t- just crack open a light bulb and just throw it. Just smoke a smoke a bowl. <laughs> crack. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. But I need to quit. I need to quit. Dude, I just need to quit the pipe, man. I need to quit the pipe. That's what I gotta do. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody, to today's episode. Um, If you have practiced minimalism in your life and feel that it was interesting, please tweet at us at OtherPondPod on Twitter. Um, You got any closing words? Also, if you. Well, also. If you were able to successfully quit the pipe, also t- tell us that on uh, Twitter. Like that, that that would be very inspirational for me, at least, because I haven't quit the pipe yet. <laughs> um. 
<laughs> no, I don't smoke crack. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> disclaimer. Nobody on this podcast smokes Prison. crack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But yeah. Um. So on that note, let's jump right, into the pond. Jump back in the pond. Swim pond. back to the other shore. Goodbye. No, we're not in international waters anymore. Bye. Goodbye.